test in one test in test in In his holy sanctuary, let the hurlers stand in awe of him.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to your heart, sir, open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Almighty everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity. And in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity, keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, 
and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the Lord, the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding an olive coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for me, for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put, the death, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then hears, hears of God, and then joined hears with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered to him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and you, yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven. The Son of Man, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may be, have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, there are some people who may only show up for church. I'm not talking about you this morning. But there are some people who may show up maybe on Easter. They show up New Year's Eve. And there was a particular gentleman who was noted for just going to church on a particular Sunday. And it was an Easter. 
It wasn't around Thanksgiving neither. It wasn't New Year's Eve neither. It was Trinity Sunday. And then someone asked him, why do you only go to church on Trinity Sunday? You know what he said? I go so that I can listen to the minister tangle himself up in trying to explain the Trinity. Because this Trinity, three persons and one God, it's a mystery and sometimes you may try to explain it and by explaining it you, <laughs> you make yourself a fool because how can you explain a mystery? It's like St. Augustine, that famous theologian, uh, he testified and said that he was writing a treatise on the Trinity and after he had written 800 pages on the Trinity, one day he was walking on the beach and he saw a little boy um, digging a hole in the sand and then going into the ocean there to catch some water, to pour water into this hole. And he asked the boy, what are you doing? And the little lad said, I'm trying to empty the ocean into this hole. And Augustine realized, well, you have been trying to do that yourself, trying to explain the Trinity. So I am now going to tangle up myself in trying to explain the Trinity this morning. But rather I would like to speak about the power of unity. Because if you look at the word Trinity, spell it for me. T-R-I. Okay, so it's three. Take away that first syllable, T-R-I, and you... Put one syllable or one um, letter, a vowel, and the vowel is U, and what do you get? Unity. Because then that's what Trinity is. Unity. Unity. A well-known story is told about a, a man who was out, um, went fishing one day, and uh, he went out fishing and um, but he couldn't swim uh, and uh, he was in a deep uh, it was deep water um, fishing and he was in this boat with others and he um, caught a fish and in, in trying to bring the fish into the, the, the boat he fell over and so the captain of the boat went and tried to pull him, hold his arm and pull him back. And in trying to pull him back, pulling his arm, the arm fell off. Because it was a false arm. And, and, and so then the, 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 the captain decided, okay, uh, uh, let me pull his leg. And so he pulled his leg and then that came off too because it was a wooden leg. Captain said, oh, what's going on here now? So then the captain decided to pull his hair and then the tope came off. And the captain said, Mister, if you can't stick together, I can't help you. And you know that's what unity is all about. If we can stick together, we fall apart. The psalmist what a wonderful, David wrote a wonderful treatise on unity. That Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when God's people dwell together in unity, he says. How good and pleasant it is when God's people dwell together in unity. And you know what he said? He said it is like the oil that ran down uh, from the head of Aaron's down to his beard, down to his collar. Now Aaron was the high priest.
And Aaron, uh, this high priest who is going to go into the temple, the, the Holy of Holies, to offer sacrifice to Almighty God. You notice uh, there are a lot of young people these days, not even young people, a lot of people. Uh, where is Mr. Wu? Could you just ask him to step by in there for me, please? Um, yes, yes, you're the man I'm looking for. Ah, ah, come on, you, you're a wonderful person, you know, you, you can preach the sermon this morning, come, 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 don't, don't be afraid, come be, don't be afraid, look, look at him, isn't he looking well groomed, and, you know, you know, give, give him a hand. He's always looking so nice with your beard. But you know, people who wear a beard, they have to pay an awful attention to that beard because, you know, uh, as you eat, anything can easily get there. Makes it look... And you see, God had a, a very important point of how you, you enter His sanctuary. And, and if you look in the book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 22, it, it reads there, and I'm, I'm reading Exodus chapter 30 verse 22. He says, The Lord spoke to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and sweet smelling cinnamon, and half as much, that is, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 cassie and measure it and with some olive oil you see God is saying here that you want you to he very specific in, in, in giving you how this oil is going to be made the, the cinnamon and the myrrh and, and you're going to mix that oil and then Aaron is going to pour that oil on his head and the oil run down to his bed and onto his shoulder because you see the Lord doesn't want anybody coming into his church with an odor you, you must be smelling good you, you get me? So, so you put on your, your perfume and, and, and your, your cologne. and So it so says here how you must put on that oil. And, and the, 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 it pours the oil on your head. And the oil runs down into his beard and on the shoulder. But note what the importance of the text here says. That oil with all of those different um, ingredients... The, the myrrh, the cinnamon, the cassia, and the olive oil, they must be blended. And when you blend it, there is unity. You got me? The, that's where the unity is. Uh, unity is like when you have that oil and it's blended. And after it's blended, you can't take out the, the cinnamon out of it. You can't take the myrrh out of it. You can't take the... The cassia out of it. It's like when you bake a cake. You bake a cake and what are your ingredients? Thank you very much, my brother. But, but, but in, in that baking that cake, what it is? The flour, the egg, the sugar, the butter. But you make that, all that wonderful recipe and you put it there and it's blended and there is unity. But after you have done that, you cannot remove the sugar. You cannot remove the butter, you can remove the egg, because it's all bounded together. And so what David is saying, that's what unity is all about. When you all come together and are blended and are united in one. And then he goes on, he says, it's like the dew it fell from Heron, Mount Heron, into the grass. That dew is still raining out there. And, and I know it 
probably foiled some of your plans for Memorial Day? And, and, any of you are disgruntled and are unhappy with this? With this weather? Why, why, why did he send this? You, you know, you need to give thanks. Even for the rain. Oh, I'm so happy with this rain. I'm so happy with this rain. You know, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I was in my garden late until late evening, planting my, 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 my little children. And, and this morning, before I came to church, I had to go out and look at my children. I had to go out. Oh, no, no. I, I, I look at my plants my as, as children. And whenever I go away, when I come back, uh, one of the first things I go, I go and look at my, my, my children. And then so I went out and I look at them. And I say, what a wonderful God. Because God sent that rain last night. And so what I planted has taken root. But let's get back there. What did the... Writer says there, it says unity is like that dew that falls from that mountain. You see, for you to appreciate the dew, you have to be in, in the Mediterranean climate where there is not much rain. When you are going through a drought, you plant some trees, some whatever you plant, the vegetables, and there is no rain. But there's a little dew. And that dew is able to sustain them and keep them alive. You see, we just came back from that trip. Dubai. And in Dubai, we are told it only rains there maybe twice per year. It's desert land. But you know, it's one of the richest countries in the world. It's a desert land. It's all sand. And, and, and you, you land at that airport. It's magnificent. I've never seen some place like that. And then you walk out and what do you see? Fountains of water. And go all over the, the, the island. You can see beautiful landscape. And yet they suffer from drought. But where did you get the water from? From the, the salting plant? And, and so from that the salting plant they can um, have these fountains and they can have beautiful landscape with all the flowers. But you see, David is writing at a time uh, and, and it's a Mediterranean climate and, and there are no desalting plants. And I want you to think in terms of, of a place where you probably have planted some crops and it's parched. It's dry. And, and even if you give them a little water, it's not the same, friends, like that rain water. But when you get up in the morning, there is a little dew. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you have seen the dew? And, and you look at the grass and it's like diamonds on that grass. And, and, and the, the, David is saying, unity is like when you have a parched land. It's parched. But a little dew comes. And it's like a little nice lotion on those parts. That's what unity is. So unity is like when you have some disgruntlement, some discord, some going on even within the congregation. But if we have unity, if we have unity, if we have like that dew, it falls upon it and all the disgruntlement and this discord can go away. But sometimes we need that little dew, not just necessary, a downpour of rain. But a little dew, that's what David is saying here, that that unity, it comes just like that dew. You see, friends, you and I 
live in this wonderful temperate climate here, but we don't really know what it is to experience drought. I remember when my wife and I were in Cape Town earlier this year, Cape Town that was suffering from a great drought. I was telling the folks this morning, you couldn't even get a shower. Uh, even if you go to the sink, <laughs> no water is running, you have to get a bottle of water. There's rationing on the water. And, and they were saying there that if they don't get any water, any rain, by April, you know, it's going to be worse. But thank God they got some rain. How much rain, I don't know. So I was telling the, the folks this morning that we just had, I just had to have a cowboy. So people say, well, what is a cowboy? You know what a cowboy is? Just a little wash up. Because there's no water. It's dry. They hadn't had a, a, a it, there has been a two years drought. But look at how we are getting this blessing of this rain. So don't complain about this rain today. But look for the dew. The dew that falls in your parched land. The dew that falls even when you're having discord and disunity. So don't complain about the discord. Look for the dew. Don't hear about the, dis the discord and the, the disunity and all the disgruntlement. Ask, where is the dew among us? We need dew to fall on us. And I was talking about it this morning and then I look at the hymn th th that is coming up. In a little while, who oh, worship the king, and, and then you look at it and what it says there um, in, in the fourth stanza. You found it? Could you just read it for me? That thy bountiful tears. What tongue can we change? The dew and the rain, the dew and the rain, we need dew. So if I hear you talking about this grandman discord among us, pray for the dew. The dew that falls on the parched land because maybe our land is parched maybe our land and, 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 and because it is parched there is cord so don't complain but ask yourself am I a Jew uh, ask yourself what can I do to dispel the discord how can God use me as a Jew to fall to distill on that soil and, and so, you see, that's what unity is all about. Unity, friends, is like, if you ever go to California, you'd see the, the noted for some trees there, the redwood, the redwood tree. Now, the redwood tree, friends, we are told can live uh, has a lifespan, maybe even 2,500 years. And they can grow as tall as 300 feet. And do one of the reasons why those trees last so long, and even no storms can really destroy them? Because of their roots. Unlike the palm tree, the palm tree, we are told, it can grow up to 30 feet tall. And 
the palm tree as it grows, if it grows 30 feet tall, it has roots that can go 30 feet down into the soil. It has tap roots. So the depth of the roots is the height, the sight of the, of, of the plant. So if it's 30 feet tall, the roots can go down 30 feet. And so it, it can stand on its own, it's out there. And so you can find palm trees there just by itself. Because it, it anchors itself in the soil. But the redwood doesn't have tap roots. With the redwood, the roots doesn't go down, but the roots goes across. And the roots goes across three times the height of the plant. So if the plant is 300 feet tall, the roots can go 900 feet across. And as it grows across, these roots goes across, it interlocks with all these other plants. So the, this root that is going all the way across, it interlocks with all the other trees. And that's what keeps it together. And so the redwood, you would never find it by itself. It operates in a cluster. There has to be a cluster of them. And that's what keeps them together. And so if the wind is going to come and blow, it has to blow down all those number of trees together because they are, it's a mat. They have folded. They have interlocked. That's unity. And you know, sometimes you find some people who do well and they, they do well in whatever they're doing. But they're like palm trees. You know, they, 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 they can do well on their own, but they're not team players. Not team players. No, not people who, who are going to interlock with each other. And, and unity is about interlocking. Unity is about coming together. And don't see yourself as the only individual, but see yourself as part of maybe the olive oil or, or the myrrh or the cinnamon, but you're interlocked with one another. And, and so th that's what unity is all about. That's what unity is when we come together and we interlock with one another. And, and it's not about the individual. But it's about the body. It's about the unity. You know, someone did a study on the Canadian geese. And, and, and this study showed that, that these Canadian geese, you know, at every, every year at a certain time they migrate south. And as they migrate south, they always travel in the V formation. And the study shows that why they travel in that V formation, because when they travel, when the geese flops its wings, the bird that is immediately behind it, you see, when it flops its wing, there is some power. When the bird um, flops its wing, and, and the bird that is immediately behind it gets some of that power to carry it. It's like... Ever notice um, you're outside there and you're standing by the street and there's a car that passed by and it's traveling at a certain speed and as it passes you, you can feel the wind uh, just like it wants to take you oh oh I, I remember back in the islands i don't see it happen here but if, if you uh p someone is on a bicycle and there's a truck you know going traveling and you get behind that truck and you just hold on to the truck but on your bicycle and 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 you are you know what i'm talking about the, the truck is carrying you with, with, with that it's like the tail end and 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 so that's the the, the mystery of those uh, canadian geese with the traveling in their v formation because as they travel 
the one that is behind is getting some of the tailwind to carry and if it ever pulls out of that formation it soon realizes that it can't do it on its own so you have to get back into the formation what the study also shows to that the one who is leading as he gets tired because he's the leader so therefore he doesn't have anyone there on whose strength he can rely on because he's the leader as he gets tired he has to get back into the formation and let someone else lead it and so that is the story friends how we in unity how we have to operate if we try to do it always be in that leadership role you get burnt out and so that's why sometimes we have to step back and let someone else take that leadership role and so that you can get back into the V formation and maybe later on you can get back in the leadership but don't stay there and get burnt out and frustrate everyone else and so that's the story of, of, of those geese and what the, the study has also shown that you know the geese when they travel you hear them making that sound, that hawk? They say that that hawk is to tell the leader, keep up the pace. You see, they communicate. You don't drag behind. And so when they make that sound, it's like telling the one leading, keep up the pace. And so, friends, that's what leader, the, the, the power of leadership, the, the power of unity, is, is how we can come together and, and work together. Because at the end of the day, friends, you know, Jesus prayed, uh, and we talked about this a few Sundays ago, that high priestly prayer, we prayed that they may be one even as you and the Father and I are one. Even as you and the Father and I are one. You see, at the heart of God, God wants unity among us. We have to always bear in mind that this church that we love so much that we sometimes want to claim that is our, it's God's church. It's God's church. And so what we have to always be asking, am I doing something to build up the unity? Or am I... Am I a, the dew that falls on the parched land? Or am I creating the discord? God's love unity. He says, Behold, and good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. And so on this day, I, I, I chose not to speak about and the, 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 the Trinity and to get myself tangled up trying to explain the mystery. But rather to show the power of unity. Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in and unseen. We believe, we believe in, one in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal and God of the Father, God, God from God, God man from man, man, true God, true God, 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 God not made, of one, one be with God, the Father, who in him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came upon him from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. 
the third, the third day rose again, again in accordance with the scriptures. Yes, he ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, come again and go to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Lord, the Lord will give you our life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who the Father and the Son will worship and glorify. He has yes, spoken through the prophets. We believe, we believe in one who will come and accept the Catholic Church. We are not in our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. As we worship the Holy Trinity, let us present our needs before the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that the one God in three persons may bring about unity and harmony among the many nations of the world. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That the church may evermore effectively proclaim Christ, who leads all to the Father and the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Amen that the abundance of life in the Holy Trinity may bring us into deeper union with those, society, with those society tends to reject or ignore. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That the poor, the sick, and all who suffer may be filled with the life of the Holy Trinity and experience the loving presence of God's people. We pray to the Lord that all who have died may share the life of the Holy Trinity forever. We pray to the Lord. Yeah. Almighty God, we praise you for revealing to us the mystery of your inner life. Grant that we may grow in faithfulness To you at, at all times by the power of your Holy Spirit. All this we ask through Christ our oh Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Merciful we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We are one body. By one spirit we all baptize into one body. Let us therefore proceed to do the things that make for peace. And build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. things come from you o lord and of your own have we given you blessed be god forever and ever amen
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks father almighty creator of heaven and earth but chiefly are we bound to praise you for your glorious resurrection of your son jesus christ our lord for he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken for the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be the incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And so on the night before he died for us, O Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we offer to your sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable for him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where with David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, O Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. gifts of God for the people of God take them in remembrance that he died for you feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving
Let us pray. The post communion prayer. Most. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for, for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the blood and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you faithful to you and to you and the and forever. Amen. Good morning all. I'd like to acknowledge anyone worshipping with us for the first time this morning. Is there any such person? None but may God bless you as you worship with us today including those who may be worshipping via YouTube. Just as a postscript to my sermon, um, and I say this because Mr. Jordan um, this morning um, did mention something about unity and he said was very very important and I did ask him for permission to share that and he said certainly. In the whole name of unity he said back you know Mr. Jordan has been living in this community for over 50 years. And he said in 1986, you see that Fambria supermarket that we have there, which is uh, quite something uh, in, in this community here. He said that supermarket was owned by one of us, by a, a gentleman who was a member of the Kaiwanis club. And they knew that he was having some financial difficulties and the Kiwalis brothers got together and said, look, uh, let's join together and how can we save this and, and keep this within our own family. And uh, mentioned that to this gentleman and he said, after that the guy skipped town right away. And next thing they know it was sold to the Korean. And that's history. And, and so the, the point he was making, if we were sticking together in unity, that would have been owned by one of us. And you look there and it's a Korean um, firm there. And he also made the point of uh, back in 1972, back in the old building, uh, when the blacks just moved into this community, and, and they had a little league here, and, and it's the, the, the whites had moved away, but they, they, so they took their families away, and they, but they were still controlling the organization, and, uh, and they, uh, Sai and others got up and said, no, it's, you, you moved away, um, you know, we, we must have some control, we must have some say. And he said, they moved out and moved and the, 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 the treasury and left it only with six cents. The whites moved, took all the money, left bank account, just six cents. And, and he making the point that how we need to work together and, and, and come in solidarity with one another, not within the church but the community as well. So I just wanted to share that with you, um, a point to be made. Um, because I look around here, you know, and I see that <laughs> Fambria, and as he said, who you see there, the employees. I, I, I see this laundromat, which was a beauty saloon there, and I remember the, 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 the guy um, who had owned that supermarket there, who was owning the uh, thing, and I, 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 I was having some conversations with him, you know, because I figured that um, here, the church need to 
uh, maybe divest and, and how we can get some more resources but of course you know they keep their things in the family and they don't live here but they come and they extract everything that you have so we have to work together as one enough said for that one let me just thank all of you for your prayers and your support your concerns your telephone calls on behalf of my son Jerim but let me just share something here and you probably you read about it in my memoirs which I'm writing it's just amazing that even as you write as some things just continue how God continues to speak for you for even the the, the, the ongoing things in your life and uh, I, I was reflecting and I shared that with you some time ago with how um, when I first came here f the fourth Sunday after I was here and, and I was meditating on the word on the Old Testament lesson for that day it was the f third Sunday in, in Lent and you know what it was about Abraham who was sacrificing his son Isaac and, and the, the little lad was on that wood and, and that altar and he said father you know here's the the wood and the, the fire but where's the lamb and then he turned around and said God will provide the lamb and th that was the text for the day or the, the, the lesson for the upcoming Sunday when my son was hospitalized and, 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 and I had to look at all that I sacrificing my son and now coming to the end of my ministry here now it's like Dushifu all over again and I, I see my son in the hospital and you should note that last Sunday evening I went to visit him the hospital it was after the two services here and I did a service for the friends of Trelawney and I want to share something that happened at that Trelawney service uh, how God works and how we need to listen and how w when we leave here we should be taking something with us because we did the service and, and during the service you know what the the organization did they, they had some candles here that they lit in memory of those who passed on and and so they were having these candles and they were they, as a memorial and, and God said something to me and said well I can't for people they, they, what about the living? The living need to get it, be the light of the world. And so I, 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 I just sprinkled something and I said, every one of you get a candle now and light it. And then we sang this little light of mine and, and we sang it and sang it and God was moving. And I saw there like, you know those, back in Jamaica where you call those little light bulbs? The light bulbs? The Simi Jimmy we call them. You know, so you see all these lights. And, and, and I said, when, you, when we leave here, we extinguish those candles there, but you're supposed to take your light into the world. And so when I got to the hospital that afternoon, that evening, my son asked me, you know what he asked me? Where's the wind? You know where that came from? Because he had seen the service in the morning about the wind. It was on YouTube, the wind. And, and I, there was I speaking about all these, you know, the, 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 the power of the wind and all. And so he is there in hospital for all these days. And he asked me, where is the wind? Because he wants the wind. And I said, I can't bring the wind, son. Because no one can catch the wind. But I said, I brought this little light. Because God had spoken to me about taking that light here. No, do, do, don't make a light for memorial for people who have passed on so much. Take a light for yourself. And so God spoke to me, take a light. And so I said, I did not bring the wind, but I brought the light and the candle of hope. And I said, this little light of yours will shine. And the wind did come. 
And so he was blown out of the hospital last Thursday. So he's home now. <laughs> My point is, friends, let's take something away. Because people are out there and they're thirsty. Their land is parched. Take a little of the dew that you have received here and take it with you. And if you do that, then you'll be there to church. So I always believe that you should leave church on a happy note to take something with you. Because when you do that, the person who you are going to meet there is expecting. My son said, where is the wind? And I had to answer them. People may not phrase it like that in so many words. Nevertheless, they are asking the same question. Especially when they look at our service. You see, we, we, we have gone global, friends. A global ministry. And, and, and so they are going to be looking at us. So, they can be asking you when you go out there, if we are disorganized, where is your unity? Enough said. You have something to say? Hi, uh, good afternoon, St. David's. Just a, a couple of things. Um, on this past Wednesday, the vestry met, and one of the things that came up was the finance committee said that um, with regards to our pledges, we um, are behind, and that um, they wanted me to advise people that, again, go back home and look and make sure and try to get caught up with our pledges because the pledges drives everything that we do in the church. So um, just pay attention to that. And even if you need to find out where you are as a pledger, you could talk to one of the treasurers or the assistant treasurer, Eula, or um, Patricia Samuels. But we need to get our pledges up to speed, especially when we're going into the summer months when people are typically away uh, for summer vacation and our pledges tend to fall behind. So we need to get those pledges up to date. Um, the second thing is, Father, we're going to have that Heads of Organization meeting that was scheduled for last Saturday. We're going to have it on Saturday, June the 9th. And just a reminder to the folks who were leading particular groups, we need to have their reports prepared for that meeting so that they can be discussed and made part of a bigger report that Father has to submit to the Lilly Foundation. So again, those individuals, I think, know themselves just have those reports ready so we can discuss them on Saturday, uh, June the 9th. Finally, um, the Praises in Steel Orchestra is going to be hosting a concert in the Undercroft on Sunday, July the 1st at about 5 p.m. We didn't get a chance to put it in the bulletin this week, but just look out for some more information on that. It's going to be a fundraiser on behalf of the church. Uh, again, and by the way, my takeaway is every time Father preaches, I think of when he leaves and what we have to do from a unity perspective. And I don't know if you guys have been observing. He has been sending, and I don't know if he's doing it deliberately, but I interpret it that way. He's been sending these subtle messages about the congregation, about the church, preparing itself for his ultimate departure from this arm. Um, this, this, this um, church. And again, I think Canon Young preached it, um, again, being about being together, about being unified, because you're going to have to deal with a lot of factions when Father is going in terms of getting a replacement rector. And one of the critical things is how we show unity in dealing with people at the diocese and in dealing, let's say, with um, potential rectors when we interview them and when they ask us questions. So that's going to be critical on a go-forward basis. And as one of my, um, when I was in sixth form back in Trinidad, we had a group of 
guys, about 20 of us, doing modern studies. And one of the things we came up with was um, we had this little quote. We called it, togetherness is the essence of the struggle. And to this day, we are still friends. And to this day, we still invoke that quote. And I know as a warden here, and as I know when Father retires and we're looking for a rec recent rector, that's going to be one of my quotes. In fact, I'm going to make a banner about it. Togetherness is the essence of the struggle. Um, have a good week and get home safely. Thanks. Now, anyone celebrating anniversaries? Oh, you're rich. I was looking for you. Good morning. Um, speaking in tune with Unity. Um, June 15th will be the Spring into Summer Dance. It's a free event. Um, we can't even say that I can't come because I have ripped jeans. Ripped jeans are in. So it's a jeans event. It's a free event. Um, today I'll be taking donations, whatever you can donate. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Anyone celebrating birthdays or anniversaries? Come forward, please. You're going solo. That's a wonderful thing. Alto, soprano, alto. We have the key. Please. We won't put you through all that. Your anniversary. Okay. And so that you may not go alone, the Lord has sent a bearer. Watch over your servants, O God, as their days increase. Oh God, we ask your blessing upon this, your servant Nicole and her dear husband. Grant them, O oh Lord, that power of unity, that they may be able to stand by each other in their time of need, in their time of joy, in their time of weakness, in their time of pain, that they may be able to interlock with each other. And that they may be able to find their mutual strength and mutual support in each other. Bless them, O oh Lord, individually and collectively. And as the rain descend upon this earth this day, O oh God, so may the blessing of God descend upon you and your loved one this day and forevermore. Amen. Renew, O Lord, this your servant as he comes to celebrate another milestone in his earthly pilgrimage. Grant, O Lord, that as you have begun that good work in him, so that you may continue to perfect him to the end, because you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. God bless you all. The peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, go with you, remain with you this day, this memorial weekend. O oh God, we ask your blessing upon all the, the veterans. We ask your blessing upon all those who have families who, who are suffering because of their service to humanity and to this country, O oh God. Even as we remember them this memorial weekend, O oh God. And so bless us and grant us a happy holi holiday for Christ our oh Lord. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.